What's up Hobby Maniacs, MBG here with a fresh look at the Master Series Airbrush Spray Booth. Uh, this thing is a pretty dope little uh, device that you can use to basically mitigate all the uh, harmful, I guess, uh, after spray of airbrushing, all the particulates and things like that. As long as you kind of spray it into the section where it kind of um, makes and pulls it into the fan, you're good to go. Now it's a completely portable operation here. You can see you can pull out from the side compartment the um, what is it the the power cable, and then basically you just flip it around, get ready to set that thing up. It's it's good to go. It's a pretty high high quality plastic like front that just kind of flips out. I I kind of I guess kind of fiddle with it a bit uh, a bit on you know the camera here because I was trying to make sure you guys could get a good angle and also trying to like. You know, not, <laughs> not, not kind of like wreck it, but I was, I don't know, the, the angle was kind of weird. So I apologize for that, but it actually goes together a lot better than, than I made it look. The sides are like kind of like a, a clear plastic and it has this really sweet filter in the, um, in the, the air, I guess, compartment right there. And it, it actually pops right out and there's a steel plate that holds it in. So you don't have to worry about it getting, getting all crazy out of whack or just kind of blown away. And it's kind of like some cotton, kind of wadding, like some really thick um, cotton, some sort of nylon mesh. They sell a refill of it. I think it's like $11. This whole system is roughly $85. It comes with um, the, the airbrush booth here and also some uh, like kind of like a fan hose kind of thing that you can stick out a window. Um, I didn't elect for that. I think, I think the 140 cubic feet uh, sucking power of this thing was good enough to uh, to kind of suck in everything as long as I kept the uh, the air spray to this uh, this spraying booth area here. Now, it's um it's actually a very secure system. The plastic pieces kind of pop off the metal bottom, so as to not break it. Because you kind of see here, I'm fiddling with it, but I mean it could have been a lot worse. I could have I could have busted those pieces, but it's actually a pretty robust, heavy plastic that I don't think you would really be able to smash unless you just basically straight up dropped it on like concrete. It's a, it's pretty high quality stuff. So I was, I was rather impressed with it. It didn't seem like you see this little box and it doesn't seem like it's, it has enough space in there to airbrush. But once you, once you transform the booth there and pop it all out, it's like, Hey, look at all the space. It's actually, I can get my hands in here. I can see the booth is clear. So the light can still get in. So it's super good to go. Um, now, part two of this video, because this is only about three minutes and 20 seconds, is me actually showing, is doing some touch-ups and showing you how to paint some lightning effects. So once I plug it in, which is super easy, it's got a really long cord, um, plug it in right here. You can't really hear the noise, but honestly, as far as noise level goes, it's not very louder than a compressor itself. And I'm running uh, well, 120, I wanna say, it's a one sixth horsepower compressor. So, I mean, it's very, you can't really complain about the noise so i think i think for your money on uh, portability this is the way to go guys all right so first off i messed up on my free hand so i had to go back and uh and respray over the banner on the night at one of the night titans i was painting up so i'm just gonna blast it with some black but also kind of try try out the airbrush booth now i put a piece of cardboard down uh, just to kind of keep all the all the paint from kind of going everywhere and then I put you'll see later in the video I put a little vertical piece of uh, of cardboard up on the left just to give me something to spray on so I'm not always spraying on my hand because um, I didn't really spray on the clear sides because that kind of seemed counterproductive then you'll start blocking the light so there's the uh, there's the monster energy this booth this booth in tutorial sponsored by monster <laughs> So getting right into it, I just hit, I just grabbed some, um, just a teal, an airbrush teal color and just kind of lightly just kind of spritzing in a little like kind of drawn out S, like a big lightning bolt kind of S curve throughout the whole banner there. Nice and easy, really, really faint, um, got some good direction as far as uh, kind of the, the flow kind of going with the cape, kind of curving around it. And also what you can see there too is that um, the distance of, that the airbrush is actually away from the uh, the piece is kind of making a, a little bit of overspray, but it's also giving me the ability to kind of swirl it really quick. And I'm not getting that, I'm getting that nice thin blend 
and I'm not not getting jammed up with like uh, with like blasting it with a solid color. So I'm getting a nice nice transparent blend. So just let that dry for a few minutes, right? And then I'm gonna come back in and cut it back because now now it's good to go. Um, you know, I got that color on there, and I'm just gonna do some freehand at that. Uh, you know, after this. So now I'm just going to come in with some black and kind of cut back some of that overspray to, and kind of cut up the S in a couple spots just to make it look really, really random like lightning because that's what you kind of want. You know, lightning doesn't just flash and it's all like one cohesive line. It kind of jumps around and dances. So I was just kind of tightening up, making the blends just a little bit better back into the black. You can kind of see the area there that's shiny where I hit it. Not, not too crazy, just enough to take that edge off. Now, another thing about this uh, this master airbrush booth is always make sure that after you're quote unquote done, you still leave it on. Just leave it going. Like go out, do your thing, leave it going, let your part dry, let it filter out all those particulates out of the air because even though you're done, there's still stuff up in the air. So never forget that, guys. It also says it's not uh, for flammable uh, fumes. So now we go back to the Beats Laboratory, get under some lights and do some freehand work here. You get a better, better look at the effect I was going for. Then I still got the blend on the back. I was very, very careful with my angles there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with some white. I like to use the Army, pa Army Painter because it's a little bit watery uh, than the Vallejo stuff. Also, my preferred brushes are Reaper. Uh, for this one, I'm going to use a Reaper one Aught. I don't know if it's one Aught. I'm going to go with one Aught. Sounds good. Um, with a really fine tip. Because when you're doing this brush work with this for lightning bolts, you want to be really tight and really precise with a really tight tip. So you're just going to kind of get get some paint on your brush. And then you're just kind of going to drag it in a very, very light. The, the, the brush is not really touching the actual banner as much as you think it would be. I'm basically just kind of hitting it, making surface contact and squiggling just kind of dragging it but that's why having that chisel point is super important because you don't want you you want to maintain that tight line because it's uh you know it's lightning so it's not going to be fat in some spots it's not going to be really thin you, you want to make you want to maintain that control and I'm you know the paint itself is a little watery so you can kind of see there so what I'm doing is I'm going to do a rough outline then where it gets a little too watery, I'm just gonna hit it back up real quick with uh, with a little bit more paint right on top just to make that line. So I'm going over the black, I'm going over the teal, and then I'm just gonna kinda fill it in as I go. Making sure that each time when I'm dipping that brush into the paint that I'm actually twirling the tip and making sure I make that nice fine tip each time. It's super important. Uh, execution. So now I'm going to grab some more paint because you can see the white has already faded into the blue and the black a bit. I'm going to go back over it, make a nice solid, um, not transparent line. We're definitely going to go opaque with this one, but it gives me basically a line to trace over. So I can kind of get in there a little bit more heavier with the stroke. You see, I'm using my pinky finger to balance on the, on the banner itself just to get in there. Um, this was a bad angle. I prefer when I'm doing detail work to pull down towards me. I feel like I have a little bit more control when I'm airbrushing. I prefer to, to start close to me and push off just because like that flicking motion with the airbrush. So it's a little bit different between painting, uh, with the brush and doing airbrush work. So try to keep that in mind for you. I it may give you more control over your freehand. And then I'm going to start at the top. Like I said, I like to pull towards me. It gives me a little bit more control when I'm when I'm being a little bit more heavier with the stroke of the actual brush. You can see I'm filling in the lightning bolt with with white, and you can see right there in the middle between the two uh, sections of paint where it's still a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna just kind of leave that because it was a little little over black. See, this is this is a very um, oh, and here you can see the uh, the uh, the what was that the castigator sword that I did. Same technique just bigger scale so once you once you get this once you add this technique um, to your repertoire then you know you can you, like I said you can scale it from a banner to a shoulder pad to a power blade I'm gonna grab some glaze some a sermon blue 
and I'm gonna cut it down with a mix of 75% water, 25% future floor wax, like straight out of the bottle. Mix it up in that bottle there. And I'm gonna use a nice flat chisel brush. I prefer these over wash brushes. I don't know why, they just work better for me. So, hey man, it's all about what works for you. What works for me might not work for you, but I'm gonna go with what I know. Then I'm gonna do a weird thing here. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna kinda do an opposite lightning bolt motion you can see it there with the wet with the wet glaze. I, I went completely almost opposite to what the lightning bolt was. And what that does is it gets that glaze over some parts of the white lightning bolt, but not others, and some parts of the black, but not others. So it's almost you're making like a false shade. So set it down, let it dry, and you can see it in there because remember, this is part floor wax. So it's gonna be a little bit shinier until you mat it down. And you can see in some of those spots where it the lightning the actual white is a little bit blue and the black is a little bit blue just very faintly because this is a glaze so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in with the brush I'm gonna hit it all now just boom so that stuff that was already blue is gonna get a little bit more blue and that white is gonna get the first shade of blue so what I'm doing is I'm kind of creating a false shade and this is kind of like a false version of wet blending but it's super quick because it's already a glaze and it's a very flat piece, so I'm just gonna lay it down, let it dry. It's very important to let it dry. Because if you don't let it dry, you're gonna mess you're gonna mess up every, the whole effect. You gotta make sure it's nice and dry. So now I just do it again. Just let it dry, give it another coat. So some parts of the lightning bolt have three coats of the blue, some parts only have two now. And now you can almost you can just start getting crazy with it. You can go you can go reverse swirls, you can go you know, come on back to, um, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do as far as like, uh, different methods and things like you can, you can just get crazy with it. I stopped right here and I let it dry. And then I did another video, which I lost because my camera malfunctioned. I mean, I apologize for that. I'm still trying to get more, more better technology here. You can see same effect, um, to that step right here with the, uh, with the larger power sword for the night castigator. And it looks great. It looks faded. It looks really good. But there's one more step. And like I said, I wasn't able to, to save the video, but I still wanted to go ahead and hit y'all with this tutorial because it's a really good effect. Now I'm going to flash up on the screen here a picture of the, the finished product. You can see the banner and the knight right there. So what happens is you're just going to want to go back with some of that watered down white paint and just kind of bury, not tracing the whole thing. But you're just going to want to very lightly trace over some areas. So you can kind of see in this picture where there's some of it's a little bit wider than others because I went back in there with that fine tip brush and just kind of very lightly dragged it on some areas. And once you matte coat it and once you um, let it dry, like completely dry, this is very important. Hit it with some matte coat, seal it all up, let it dry, then go back with a heaping ton of gloss varnish, a little bit watered down. And just gloss varnish everything, the whole blade, boom. You don't have to worry about the, the tabard. It'll look fine without that. But the blade is completely gloss varnished to give it a little bit of shimmer. So it's pretty dope there. So that's it. Pretty quick and easy tutorial on how to do a really dope, I feel like, lightning effect um, that's super, super easy to do. Just a little bit of brush control. You can even do it without an airbrush. You can, instead of airbrushing that, that hawk turquoise kind of, kind of color, you could just use a light dry brush in a squiggle pattern or something like that. Same thing, same effect. The big key is your glazes and your brush control here and making sure everything dries between applications. So, like I said, that's about it for this one, guys. Um, I really appreciate all the support I've been getting lately up on, uh, my patron, um, you know, it really makes it a lot easier to do these videos. They're very time intensive. I love doing them. I love sharing the hobby with you all. And it's, uh, it's, it's been great. It's, I love hearing these stories, uh, inspiring everybody. So please, I, I appreciate all your support. Eventually I would like to get a, <laughs> a lot more better technology, more better and be able to have these things done, uh, a little bit higher quality. I've been trying to improve here and there, but. Uh, not quite to the level I want to be yet, but uh, we're going to get there. So again, thank you guys for all your support. If you if you want to check out what Patreon's all about, definitely click the link on the screen there. So uh, that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything in particular you would like to see in the future, definitely hit it up in the comments. I would love to hear 
uh, your suggestions and if it's anything I can do or have done already, I will put it right in the link there and help you out. Um, so make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel if you haven't already. Uh, hit up the blog, spikybitsblog.com and listen to our podcast, forgenarrative.com.